From VOA Learning English, this is the Science Report. Tigers are the largest, most powerful cats on the planet. They are also endangered. A new study says tigers are far more at risk of extinction than wildlife experts believed. That means they could disappear forever. The new census, or count, found fewer than 200 tigers are left in the Sundarbans mangrove forest of Bangladesh. The Sundarbans is one of the last remaining habitats or natural homes for tigers. It spreads across southern Bangladesh and eastern India. The latest census used infrared cameras to arrive at what wildlife experts believe is a more exact number than before. The cameras took pictures when they observed something with body heat. Now, the entire forest is believed to hold about 182 tigers in both countries. Indian wildlife scientist Yavindradev Jala noted that more than three-fourths of the world's tiger population lives in India and Bangladesh. He said the new census numbers show that the species is threatened. He blamed illegal hunting and a new power plant. He says bringing coal to the plant by boats on the water will divide the tiger populations. He says the smaller groups have a high chance of becoming extinct. A spokesman with the Bangladeshi Wildlife and Nature Conservation Division said the government plans to declare the entire Sundarbans a protected area. He said activities that threatened the tigers will be restricted. Some estimates say only around 3,200 tigers are left in the world. For VOA Learning English, I'm Jonathan Evans. From VOA Learning English, this is the Health Report. Is a new deadly polio virus hiding somewhere in the world? Some scientists believe this might be true. Polio causes paralysis, leaving victims unable to walk or move parts of their bodies. The disease does not usually kill. But polio was deadly when the virus appeared in the Republic of the Congo in 2010. Nearly half of the 445 people who were infected died. New research shows there might have been a weak spot in the polio vaccine. Researchers say mutations or changes in the polio virus were responsible for that unusually deadly outbreak. The researchers say new kinds of polio may come into existence as the world gets closer to stopping the virus. Felix Drexler is an expert on viruses at the University of Bonn in Germany. He says those infected in the Congo were different from other polio patients in an important way. He says about half of them remembered taking three doses of the live vaccine. He says they should not have gotten sick as a result. Mr. Drexler and other researchers studied that polio virus. 
They found it had some never before seen mutations. These changes prevented disease fighting antibodies from attacking the virus. The Republic of the Congo had been polio free before the 2010 outbreak. It ended after four nationwide vaccination campaigns. Experts say the worldwide end of polio is near. There have been fewer than 150 cases this year. Walt Orenstein is with the Emory Vaccine Center in the United States. He says health workers need to kill the virus in the last few areas where it remains. Then, he says, talk about mutant strains or stronger vaccines would be unnecessary. For VOA Learning English, I'm Alex Villarreal. From VOA Learning English, this is the Health Report. Research suggests that the bubonic plague existed thousands of years before it caused widespread death in 14th century Europe. Danish researchers examining human teeth fossils have discovered evidence of the plague from almost 5,000 years ago. In the middle 1300s, the disease killed 50 to 60 percent of Europe's population. But the bacterium was not nearly as aggressive in its earlier form. That is what the study's leader, Simon Rasmussen of Denmark's Technical University, says. He helped examine 101 fossilized teeth from the Bronze Age, about 5,000 years ago. Only seven of those teeth contained evidence of the plague. This suggests the bacterium did not spread as easily then as it did later. Today, even infected fleas can pass the disease to humans. Rasmussen said the Bronze Age plague did not have the gene that makes it able to live in a flea. The Danish researchers had earlier reported on genomic studies of the plague. Those studies said the plague might have been part of widespread disease that led to the fall of classical Greece and hurt the ancient Roman army. Rasmussen says the ancient epidemics may also have led to a number of mass migrations. Plague is rare today. A large outbreak happened in India in 1994 when almost 700 cases were reported. With early antibiotic treatment, Rasmussen says the plague is almost completely curable. The latest findings are published in the journal Cell. For VOA Learning English, I'm Jonathan Evans. From VOA Learning English, this is the Health Report. A new study has found that Americans are generally in good health, but some may be living with chronic disease longer and dying younger. Even without the study, some Americans seem to understand that a long life does not necessarily mean a healthy life. Christopher Murray from the University of Washington led the study. He says Americans 
are spending more years of their lives with long-term diseases. Researchers studied the major diseases and injuries that were at least partly to blame for Americans' health problems and early deaths over the past 20 years. They found the leading causes of chronic or long-lasting disability include depression, anxiety, and back pain. Other leading causes are diabetes and lung diseases that block airflow and make breathing difficult. The researchers identified heart attack, stroke, and cancer as the leading causes of early death. Dr. Murray says too many Americans are dying at an early age because they smoke or eat too many of the wrong foods. He says poor diet is blamed for 680,000 deaths. That is more than the 400,000 deaths a year from tobacco use. Obesity and high blood pressure are other conditions responsible for poor health. Another concern is air pollution. The National Institutes of Health says air pollution has been linked to heart and lung diseases. There was also good news from the study. It showed that Americans are generally enjoying better health longer. That is because of better methods for treating stroke and fighting some cancers. But it also found America is behind other wealthy nations in improving the health of its citizens. For VOA Learning English, I'm Alex Villarreal. From VOA Learning English, this is the Health Report. Mental health experts often use a treatment called prolonged exposure therapy to help soldiers returning from battle. In prolonged exposure therapy, or PET, patients are asked to remember painful incidents and talk about their feelings. They repeat this process until these memories no longer make them suffer. PET can help soldiers who suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD. They developed emotional problems because of experiences in battle. PTSD is not limited to soldiers. It is also seen in young women who were sexually abused or raped when they were children. Edna Foa of the University of Pennsylvania helped to develop prolonged exposure therapy to treat PTSD. She believes the treatment can offer such girls a cure that lasts longer than what she calls supportive counseling. She says PET gives them the skills they need to face the memories of their abuse. Her research team compared prolonged exposure therapy to supportive counseling in a group of 60 sexually abused girls. All the girls suffered from PTSD and were 13 to 18 years old. Each girl saw a trained therapist 14 times. Some received PET, the others were given supportive counseling. Dr. Foa says girls treated with PET experienced fewer symptoms and were less likely to suffer from depression than the other girls. They also showed more improvement in quality of life measurements. 
Dr. Foa says most of the girls treated with PET were thought to be free of PTSD. She adds that social workers can be trained in PET in just four days. A report on the study was published in the Journal of the American Medical Association. For VOA Learning English, I'm Laurel Bowman. From VOA Learning English, this is the Health Report. Alcohol drinkers are often cigarette smokers. Scientists have noted the relationship for a long time, but they have not been able to determine why the two behaviors are connected. Now, a new study may provide some explanation. Mahash Thakkar is head of research in the Department of Neurology at the University of Missouri's School of Medicine. He led the study. The Journal of Neurochemistry published the research. Thakkar says alcohol causes sleepiness. He says nicotine, a drug in cigarettes, fights that sleepy feeling. This means the drinker can stay awake and consume more alcohol. At the same time, nicotine is addictive. So the more a person drinks, the more that person will smoke and then drink and so on. The study measured brain activity in rats. The researchers injected the rats with both nicotine and alcohol and then studied brain activity in the animals as they slept. The researchers found that nicotine cancels out the sleep-causing effects of alcohol. They say the nicotine does this work in the basal forebrain area. Mahesh Thakkar says that is the reward center of the brain. This area is responsible for memory and learning. Earlier research has shown that more than 85% of American adults who are dependent on alcohol are also dependent on nicotine. The World Health Organization blames alcohol and nicotine use for more than 7 million deaths a year. For VOA Learning English, I'm Carolyn Prasuti. From VOA Learning English, this is the Health Report. Researchers recently completed a study of a new method of giving health care to women in northern Nigeria. They found women and children would use health services more often when they could see a female health worker. Northern Nigeria is a conservative, mostly Muslim area. Dr. Sally Findlay from Columbia University Medical Center co-wrote the study. She said it is unusual for women to work as health care providers there. Nigeria has one of the world's highest death rates for women who are pregnant or are giving birth. And the highest rate is in the country's north. Male health workers do travel from town to town, but many women patients do not want to talk with a man about their own health care needs. 
Dr. Findlay said the trial study in Jagawa State required that many in the community be involved. It also needed support from religious leaders, even with transportation for the workers. The program brought women into northern Nigeria as community health extension workers. After the women health workers arrived, there were five times more visits to the health center than before. Dr. Findlay said the program changed the minds of the women taking part. Women could get health care anytime at the local clinic. Mothers got help from the women for normal births. If a mother giving birth needed more help, she was taken to a hospital. They also gave advice on family planning. State officials in Jagawa were happy with the positive results of the study. They plan to expand the program of women community health workers. For VOA Learning English, I'm Alex Villarreal. From VOA Learning English, this is the Health Report. Harvest Plus is an agricultural research organization. It is teaching people how to grow so-called smart crops. Its project in Mozambique is having surprising effects. In 2006, Harvest Plus workers provided orange sweet potato plants to people in 24 Mozambique villages. The workers taught people how to grow the vegetables. They also explained the importance of vitamin A. Farmers in Mozambique had been planting white and yellow sweet potatoes, not the orange colored ones. The white and yellow potatoes have very little vitamin A. However, one small orange sweet potato has a full day's supply of vitamin A. Vitamin A is important for healthy eyesight and helps the body fight infections. The World Health Organization says 190 million young children around the world are not getting enough vitamin A in the foods they eat. Economist Alan DeBrow is with the International Food Policy Research Institute. He talked about the Harvest Plus project. He says about 70% of children in Mozambique were not getting enough vitamin A. Mr. DeBrow says the potatoes had a surprising effect on children's health. At the end of three years, the researchers compared the health of children in villages growing orange sweet potatoes to those not growing them. Children living in the sweet potato villages had 40% fewer cases of diarrhea than other boys and girls. Under the age of three, the difference was 50%. Experts say teaching farmers how to grow healthier food is among the best ways to improve health. For VOA Learning English, I'm Jonathan Evans. Act number than before. The cameras took pictures when they observed something with body heat. Now, the entire forest is believed to hold 
about 182 tigers in both countries. Indian wildlife scientist Yavindradev Jala noted that more than three-fourths of the world's tiger population lives in India and Bangladesh. Nature Conservation Division said the government plans to declare the entire Sundarbans a protected area. He said activities that threatened the tigers will be restricted. Some estimates say only around 3,200 tigers are left in the world. For VOA Learning English, the new census or count found fewer than 200 tigers are left in the Sundarbans mangrove forest of Bangladesh. The Sundarbans is one of the last remaining habitats or natural homes for tigers. It spreads across southern Bangladesh and eastern India. The latest census used infrared cameras to arrive at what wildlife experts believe is a more exact From VOA Learning English, this is the Science Report. Tigers are the largest, most powerful cats on the planet. They are also endangered. A new study says tigers are far more at risk of extinction than wildlife experts believed. That means they could disappear forever. He said the new census numbers show that the species is threatened. He blamed illegal hunting and a new power plant. He says bringing coal to the plant by boats on the water will divide the tiger populations. He says the smaller groups have a high chance of becoming extinct. A spokesman with the Bangladeshi Wildlife and 